Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the approach that I use for coloring. So in the previous two parts, we talked about ideating um, and developing concepts for this dungeon. And then we talked about penciling and inking. So this is the third and hopefully a third chapter on coloring. So how do I approach coloring? Typically what I like to do is I like to start out with a base color and then derive um, light, medium, and dark values. In other words, you know, use color to suggest depth. So this is kind of a cold scene. It's a predominantly, you know, creepy type of area. So I'm going to go in with, you know, something that might be more like a, a desaturated purple. Start out with that and flood the color in. I'm using option delete, alt backspace. It's a really important keyboard shortcut. Um, the other thing I also like to, uh, you know, use, I like to use the color picker in the form of a color wheel. And you can access that by going to the hamburger menu and choosing color wheel. So what do I do next? So the th next thing I want to do is I want to divide this base color into sections. So I'm going to use my lasso tool. I can also use the pen tool for this. And I'm just simply going to select everything that's in the foreground, which in this case is this area over here. And I did make a couple of little mods after the last video, like I added a little chain link and a few other things. Nothing too drastic, but I did, did go back and make some updates. It's just much easier for me to do that when I'm not actively talking and recording a video. So right away by just dropping the lightness, it puts the focus in the midground. Right, so we can see the skulls, but now we can see beyond the skulls. There's a layering between foreground, midground, and background. All right, so now now that we have that in place, let's zoom in a little bit and let's take a look at our background area. So for this, I'm just going to simply switch to the polygonal lasso tool. Just it's a little bit quicker. I'm just going to block this area out. Create an enclosed uh, selection. Again, I'm on the base layer, Command J or Control J. And I'll just make this just a little bit lighter. And I'll maybe bump up the saturation a little bit too. So we've divided these colors into light, medium, and dark. And that allows us to get an understanding of the depth that we're trying to create. So color can be used to create depth and mood. Let me just go ahead and touch up these areas over here. Okay, so now let's think about our light sources. So in this case, we've got two torches that are creating light. Um, and just because I'm working in a purplish hue doesn't mean I have to stick with that. I can go with any of the other cooler colors. Like as I look at this, um, I'm thinking that the midground values here might be a little bit just too light, so I'll just shave it down a notch. All right, so that way we have a little bit more contrast between the background and the midground. And in one of my earlier videos, we talk about doing a quick grayscale test. I've got that mapped to Command Y, and I'll put a link to that in the description of the video. But if you hit Command Y, you can see what this looks like in grayscale. So this helps you determine the tonal range and the tonal values that you have uh, in place. So I can look at this and I can say, well, maybe I want to use the hue saturation tool and adjust the darkness of the skulls a little bit more. Right? Give it a little bit more contrast between the foreground and the midground. So I'll hit Command Y again. And I like to put all of my color choices on separate layers. So let's just address the, the, the tiki torches. So a complementary color of purple is yellow, which is why I'm starting out with that. If you have an area that has gaps in it, you can always use the lasso tool to create an enclosed selection. All right, 
so now let's look at the other objects that we have within our scene. So we have, you know, our light. We're basically working with color flats at this stage. And what I mean by that is there are no highlights. There are no, you know, uh, colored shadows. It's just basically flat colors. So I'm going to select the dungeon door, command J. And here, what I'll do is I'll just change the, t um, the hue and the saturation. I don't want to have super bright colors within the dungeon walls because it's a dark, dank, kind of creepy place. And if I have very saturated colors, it just kind of throws the whole thing off. Uh, and then this area right here, I'm going to darken that up a little bit. And then with these bars, again, I can use the polygon lasso tool. Command J, Command U. I can make it lighter. I can change the hue to make that pop. And then if I want to, I can use the magic wand tool. When I use the magic wand tool, make sure that you have Sample all layers selected. Um, really important because otherwise it will try to select everything in your composition. And then this area is going to be darker because it's not receiving direct light. Down here, I might make that a little bit more gray. And let's just do a grayscale check as we're working through it. Okay, so far so good. All right, so now let's take care of some of the other stuff that's in the mid ground over here. So the easiest way that I can deal with coloring this entire swath of rocks is just to go ahead and use the Polygon Lasso tool. Make a complete selection, Command J, Command U. And I'll make these kind of a little bit more bluish. Again, Focusing on cool colors, this bone, command J, command U, drop the saturation down, increase the lightness. I don't want this to dominate, I just want the bone to be there. Um, so I'm not going to make it super pronounced. The reason why is if you have a predominantly dark scene, if you make something really light, your eye immediately goes to that spot. All right, same thing for these uh, treasure chest things, all this individual objects. I'm just gonna apply a base color. Just select the whole kit and caboodle. And you don't have to work this way. This is just, I'm just sharing my process on how I do things. But it's by no means a, uh, you know, a, uh, commandment, like thou shall do it this way. No, it's, you have to pick the way that's going to be most comfortable for you. I'm hoping that these videos will at least give some insight into my techniques. And if you find them useful, by all means, go ahead and use it. You know, my goal is to help you get more proficient at what you do. So I want to add kind of a little bit of a, I'll make this a little bit lighter, but I also want to give it a little bit more of a yellowish tinge. I guess I'm going green. So I can use the hue to kind of help me dial in. And then I can use the saturation to control the lightness. Now, do I really care about painting every facet of this person in the painting? No. So what I'll do here is just um, make a selection because this is just set decoration. It's not meant to, you know, uh, I'm not, you know, putting the focus or attention on this portrait. It's just part of the environment. It adds a little bit of a narrative element to what I'm doing, so maybe I'll just I'll do 
that and um, I'm not going to get super crazy with the details on this. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Why is it selecting everything? Go back to the regular freeform lasso tool. Select the crown. And I'm just going to keep this kind of more monochromatic. Again, because the emphasis is not this painting. And so I don't want the viewer to dwell on that. As they look around, it might be kind of neat for them to take it in. But it's not like an area that demands immediate focus. It's just something that you get when you're looking around the composition. There we go. And now for this treasure chest. I'll divide the treasure chest into planes. This plane is not receiving any direct light. So I'm going to make a lasso selection around it. You can hold shift to add to your selection. Command J, Command U. And I'll make that darker. Right away you can see that that creates a little bit of a pop. Now the question is, is there enough difference between the value on the back of this treasure chest and the value of this um, king's coat. If we do a grayscale check, we can see the values are very similar. So what I can do is I can just make that a little bit darker to create more separation. And it's really important when you're coloring to make sure that your objects just don't run in or blend in with each other. I always like to think about contrast. Uh, I'll select this painting over here for usually straight edge objects. I use the polygonal lasso tool and this I'll make it a little bit more brown. Command J, Command U. tries to select everything in the composition. It is because of the fact that I have an opening, a gap somewhere. All right, and then let's go back to the chest itself. I'm gonna to add to my selection by holding down the shift key and then switching to the polygonal lasso tool. You can switch between your lasso tools by hitting shift L. area over here. Do you have to close all the gaps when you're coloring? No. There are many artists that don't do that. There's nothing wrong. It's a pretty interesting aesthetic. It just makes more work, I think, when you're just trying to color. But That's where these shortcuts come in. Alright, so I've got the treasure chest in there. And let's think about the uh, walls and the floor. I'm just going to create a selection around the floor. I want the floor to have more of a dirt type look. And look how sloppy the selection is. Why am I being sloppy? Because this layer is going to be underneath all the other layers. And I don't care about if it goes beyond that edge. Let me, let me demonstrate. I'll go back to my base color layer. Command J, Command U, and make it desaturated. And all the other stuff is hidden, so I don't have to worry about that. Okay, now I've got the walls, and I can just go back to my base layer, hit Command J. Drop the saturation down a little bit. Um, and I want to give it kind of more of a bluish type of feel. I'm 
do a color check, grayscale check. Okay, you see how those torch lights are kind of really drawing your attention? It's kind of uh, dominating it, and that's not a problem. Okay, so now what I can do, so these are just color flats here. I'm just establishing, um, you know, how I want these colors to look. Maybe uh, for this edge of the structure, just to give it some separation. I'll just make a selection for that. Command J, Command U, and I'll maybe make that a little bit lighter. to suggest that that's receiving a little bit of light. And it's also gonna create some uh, differentiation between the side of that entrance and the, the bricks or the stones that are surrounding it. Okay, so I've got basically all of my color flats in, just a few little things, I guess the torch. Let's just do that. Sometimes as I talk, I kind of like, I'm thinking about what I'm saying, and I'm not really focusing on what I'm doing. Okay, command. Well, in this case, I've got two selections, but they're on different, um, if I wanna make them, um, you know, if I wanna color them at the same time, what I have to do is I have to move this up to the top of the layer stack. And this is one of those cases where I will pick something from the um, color wheel directly. Why? Because this selection is on, um, you know, has a color on one layer, and this selection has a color on another layer. There's no way I can select them both at the same time. Uh, and then finally, I'll do the same thing for uh, these little holders, these torch holders. If you know what these things are called, Put them in the comments below. I want to learn something. It's too bright, so I'll just drop it down. All of my color choices are being made to suggest mood and to also suggest where I want the viewer to look. And right now, I've just got my color flats. What I mean by that is they're just flat colors. There's no highlights, there's no shadows. Everything is just flat values. All right, so now let me look at the stairs that I have. And the bottom part of my stairs with the polygonal lasso tool, I will just shift select all the vertical parts of the stairs. Command J, Command U, and I'll make that a little bit darker. Drop down the saturation a little bit. Okay, so now I've got all my color flats more or less put in. Uh, and I'm ready to now think about how the light is going to affect all the objects within the scene. So. I guess this is where it gets a little bit fun. Uh, I will use the elliptical marquee tool and just make a circular selection around this torch right here. And I will pick kind of a yellowish color, maybe I'll lighten it up a little bit. And I'll move this underneath the torch layer and I'll set this layer to, um, let's see, we've got screen and light, and then what these will do is lighten the objects underneath. I don't want it to be so bright that it kind of diminishes any of the walls. Um, what I'll do is I'll just drop the opacity to about maybe 60%. I want some of that color to go through. I guess I'm gonna end up with soft light and I'll just tweak. The saturation.
I might have to come back in there and, and add some more stuff, but that's just kind of like what's being illuminated. Let's do the same thing for the other uh, torch. Putting that on its own layer. I kind of like that yellow better. And let's just trim off the excess. In fact, I'm going to go back and switch this. Let's just keep it normal for now. And lighten it up. I'll just keep it very simple. Okay, so we have this light and it's got a very sharp penumbra, which is like that area of focus. I want to go ahead and blur that out a little bit. Um, but I also want to think about how this light is going to affect the um, other surrounding areas. And this is where my highlights are going to come in. So what I want to do is like, as this light bleeds out, it's going to affect the wall behind it. It's going to affect some of the walls that are on the side. It's going to affect the skulls. Now let's make a new layer called highlights. Let's double click on this layer called highlight. And uh, I'll go in with kind of a lighter yellow value and I'll use my brush. And what I'll do here is just kind of like add some of that light coming back onto the torch. Um, this light here will more than likely affect its surrounding areas. Like this is how we can get some um, volume on the stone. Kind of working with that hatching that I have here to blend the light a little bit more. This is not something I would normally do, but it's just kind of a shoot from the hip type moment. Sometimes you got to do that. All right, there's uh, some light that's going to come back here. Where parts of the rock will also receive that light. You might see some of that light on the stairs itself. And you might see the light reflect some of the shinier parts of the objects that are in the scene. Right, so those are highlights. They kind of, you know, the more metallic something is, the more it's going to reflect that light. You might also see it over here on these bars. And let's see what that does in terms of our grayscale values. Well, it certainly makes some of those other objects in the scene, makes them a little bit more, you know, prominent or aware. And then I want to also think about maybe how the light is influencing the skulls that are here in the immediate foreground. Now, if I use a really bright value, as light gets further away from its source, it starts to decay. So what I'm going to do here is sample this value and just use a lighter purple and... I'll just put this on a separate layer in case I want to make some modifications, but so these are all areas that are facing the light source. And what I can do is maybe drop the opacity down a little bit so that you can see some highlights, but it's not super duper prominent. And then I'll go back to my yellow highlights here. Let's sample. 
pull this yellow. Sometimes little bits of stone get picked up on that too. And now we're ready to go ahead and add some dark values. And this is where I'm going to go back to my base color layer. So I've got my skulls here, right? And with the freeform lasso tool, all those bits that are not facing the light source directly, I'm using my freeform lasso tool to make a rounded selection. Command J, Command U. And that adds a little bit more darkness. It also gives those things a little bit more form. And then for the um, mountains or the rocks, if I want to find out exactly what layer this color is on, sometimes you end up with tons of layers. You can just right click and it tells you what's, what layers are directly underneath your where your cursor is. So with these rocks that are in the more immediate foreground, I'm going to hit Command J, Command U, make them a little bit darker. And let's see, are there any other areas where I think, yes, the walls. So if I go back down to the base layer of the walls, that means all of this area right here is going to be a little bit darker. And I'm going to hold down the shift key, make my additional selections. It's going to make this entire swath somewhat dark. So Command J, Command U. And now we're getting that kind of stone structure. And what's cool about this is I can come back in with my lasso tool and just remove. So these are getting some light, but they're not getting as much light. And it's giving some definition to some of those stone forms. So it doesn't just look like one flat value. And let's see what I have so far. We'll do a grayscale check. So, so far that looks pretty okay. The only question is where do I want the viewer to look? So right now, the two torches are kind of equally weighted. What I mean by that is that my eye goes to this torch and this torch here first. And what I can do is I can kind of change that up by uh, making one just a little bit brighter than the other. So what I'm going to do here is for this torch, I'm just going to add just a little sliver of that white. You know, like it's just sparking. And this is going to be the whitest white that I have in this particular scene. So it's going to, you know, create a little bit more um, attention to it than the um, torch in the back. And I can also add a little bit of that white here, but I'm not going to make it as prominent. And if I do my grayscale check, boom, your eye goes to this one first because it has more light values. It's the lightest light in the entire scene. And one way that you can always check to see your tonal range, if you go to image and if you go to adjustments and you look at levels, and this is gonna only show it on a per, le uh, per layer basis. So what I might end up having to do to really get a more accurate reading is I have to merge these layers and then check the levels. So let me do that. If I hold down shift, Option Command E or Shift Alt Control E, I can merge all my existing layers onto one layer and still preserve the layer stack underneath. And what I want to do now is I want to hit Command L. And now you can see that 
the, this histogram right here represents uh, all the, the, the overall range from black to white with all the different shades of gray in between. And what this is saying is that there is a dominant amount of darker values. Like this is black, and then we have a lot of dark grays. And these spikes here indicate that within that specific sliver of dark gray, there is more of that dark gray than the adjacent value to the left or to the right of it. And it goes all the way up to where we see these little spikes over here. These, this spike that's on the far right corresponds to the amount of white that's in the scene. So you can see that the whitest white is uh, represented um, in this particular area over here. So when you're looking at this levels, just double check to make sure that you have a wide range. If you have everything, if it's a dark scene and everything is dark, then you're not gonna have any kind of highlights and it's gonna make it difficult to actually see. So uh, I'm gonna turn this off for just one sec since I don't need it and I just wanna give a bonus tip. If you watch this video for this long, then I feel like you need to be rewarded. So I'm going to now do something with the actual flames themselves and I'm going to color lock my inks layer and I'm just gonna change the value of the torches. And I'm just gonna pick kind of a reddish orange. And a color lock just simply restricts your painting to whatever is already on that layer. So watch, if I go back to my brush tool, I can come back in and just quickly color this. And why am I doing that? Well, it, it just makes the flame look more translucent or transparent. It doesn't um, feel like it's got the same, um, you know, um, solidity like the other objects that are in the uh, scene here. And I'll do that same thing over here. And that just gives it a, you know, more, uh, you know, eerie type of feel. Maybe like for these lines that are going around, um, instead of just making black outlines like I currently have, what I can do is just pick um, a yellowish color, make the brush big, and so these are all the areas that are just kind of getting bathed in light. So that kind of gives it a little bit, it blends in a little bit more. It kind of integrates it better with the environment that it's in. And I'm, since I've got a, a doorway here, I'm just gonna try to mimic that hatching that goes down the doorway. And you know, you can always add more to it. This is not meant to be a complete comprehensive uh, exercise, but this is just to give you some food for thought. As always, I appreciate the feedback that you're giving me on these videos. Please do write a comment, let me know what you think. Do you prefer these long form videos or do you want them to be more bite sized and short? I thought that I could kind of like vary it up a bit. Um, and please tell a friend if you are getting some value out of these videos, I definitely would appreciate um, an endorsement from you. That would mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.